Ads heard before, during, or after the podcast are not endorsed by Church of the Undead or myself unless voiced by me personally. All other ads are pre-recorded, inserted by ad agencies, and are not in my control. We've all heard the question asked, and we've all struggled to come up with the exact perfect answer. Why would God send a good person to hell? After all, we all agree that someone like Adolf Hitler should be there, right? And Charles Manson? But then we also know a lot of people in our lives who may not be saved but appear to be better people than some others we actually attend church with. So doesn't it seem unfair that those good people who don't know God would go to hell while the less than great people going to church with us do make it through the pearly gates? How can this be? Hello, Weirdos! I'm Pastor Darren. Welcome to the Church of the Undead. Here in the Church of the Undead, I can share ideas which are relevant to those who suffer with depression, need some encouragement, and for those who love or are just curious about the God of the Bible. And it doesn't matter if you are a weirdo in Christ or just a weirdo, everybody's welcome here at the Church of the Undead. And I use the word undead because here we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. If you want to join this weirdo congregation, just click that subscribe or follow button and visit us online at WeirdDarkness.com slash church. Full disclosure, I might use the term pastor because I've branded this feature as a church, but I do not have a theology degree, nor did I ever go to Bible college. I'm just a guy who gave his life to Christ in 1989 and has tried to walk the walk ever since, and has stumbled a lot along the way. Because, like everybody else, I am an imperfect, heavily flawed human being. So please don't take what I say as gospel. Dig into God's Word yourself for confirmation, inspiration, and revelation. That being said, welcome to the Church of the Undead. This week's message is based on a column written by Dr. Roger Barrier. So, why would God send good people to heaven? First, we have to stick really closely to the Bible to deal properly with this question. Most people believe they will go to heaven or hell based on how good or bad they were here on earth. While most people think it might be close, that they might make it by the skin of their teeth, they do believe that they'll make it to heaven, because after all, they are better than many other people they know. Unfortunately, the opposite is true. Hebrews 9 verses 27 and 28 says, Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. In Romans chapters 3 through 7, Paul shows how all have sinned and are guilty. In Romans chapters 1 and 2, Paul shows us why good men and women aren't good enough for God's heaven. Good people need forgiveness for their sins just like everyone else. Christians have their sins forgiven at the cross. Because of God's grace and mercy, Christians will never face their sins again. But that's not the case for those who died without a Savior, even the good ones. Revelation 20 verses 11 through 14 describes the great white throne judgment when those who've died without a savior are given the opportunity to convince God why he should let them into heaven unforgiven and without a savior. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire." 
key to understanding good people in hell revolves around the Book of Life and the Book of Works. The Book of Life contains the names of everyone who has ever and who will ever be born. Those who die without a Savior have their names blotted out of the Book of Life and will be evaluated by their behaviors instead, which are recorded in the Book of Works. I imagine those awaiting their turns with Jesus to be organizing their speeches to show him why they are good enough for heaven. What would you say if you were there being asked to account for your life and actions? God will then show them in the Book of Works why they are not good enough. Then the Lord Jesus will open the Book of Life and discover, as he already knows, that their names are not in there. Tragically, they will be tossed into the lake of fire and assigned to hell for eternity. The problem is that no one is good enough for God's heaven. No one. Not you, not me, not Billy Graham or Mother Teresa, not your pastor. No one. If God were to let us into heaven with all of our sin, we would wreck the place. We need the righteousness of Jesus Christ and our surrender to Him as Lord and Savior to clean our lives of sin and make us fit to live in heaven. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. In Romans 2, the Apostle Paul shares with us the seven factors of judgment that Jesus will use when he opens the books of works at the great white throne judgment. From these books, Jesus will prove why good people are not fit for heaven. Romans 2 does not show folks how to be saved. This passage shows folks why they are lost. These are not the principles of salvation. These are the principles of evaluation. Here are seven of the reasons why good people are disqualified from entering into God's heaven. 1. God will evaluate according to truth as outlined in the Bible, Romans 1-3. through God will judge everything according to truth, because we all are in the habit of comparing ourselves with others. On Judgment Day, God will say to those who died without Jesus Christ as their Savior, Let's judge you for who and what you really are. 2. God will evaluate according to His kindness. Romans 2 verse 4, Or do you presume on the riches of His kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? God's judgment will be in proportion to the amount of kindness that God has poured out to people during their lifetimes. God expends His kindness to us that He might lead us to repentance. Christians often wonder why lost people seem to have it so good sometimes. The answer is that it's just God's kindness to turn them to repentance. The longer they reject His kindness, the more inexcusable they will be when they stand at the great white throne judgment. They'll only have it good on this side of eternity, if they continue to have it good at all. 3. God will evaluate according to His accumulated wrath. Romans 2 verse 5, But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Hardening of arteries can take us to an early grave, but hardening of the heart, spiritually, will take us ultimately to the lake of fire. If the grace and kindness of God have not led us to repentance, then every day, moment by moment, hour by hour, we are storing up drops of the terrible treasure of God's wrath 
which he will bring forth at the great white throne. God is allowing us to live, and he is holding back punishment, giving us kindness so that we might turn to him in repentance. Our judgment for eternity will be in direct proportion to the amount of kindness that God has given to us which we ignored as coming from God. 4. God will evaluate according to deeds. Romans 2 verses 6 through 10 says, He will render to each one according to his works. To those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil, the Jew first and also the Greek, but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, the Jew first and also the Greek. Standing before God now is the person who says, Look, God, judge me according to my deeds. I've lived a good life. Take my good works and put them beside my bad ones, and certainly the good will outweigh the bad. But the problem with the moral man here is that he thought his good deeds would be weighed against his bad deeds, or at least be compared against the deeds of others. That is what so many people have told me when they say that they will get to heaven. But that will not be the case. God will take the best works of the moral man or woman and compare them with Jesus' works. Jesus raises the lame, gives sight to the blind, and heals the sick. He takes on the sins of the entire world and by his death and sacrifice brings salvation to those who commit to him as Savior and Lord. No person in his or her right mind wants to be judged on works if they know they are being compared to Jesus, because there is no comparison. You want God's mercy, not judgment on what you've done. 5. God will evaluate without playing favorites. Romans 2.11, For God shows no partiality. God offers salvation to everyone because everyone needs it. God is no respecter of persons. He shows no favoritism. Regarding the issue of sin, no one is better than anyone else from God's perspective. Despite what you may have been led to believe, Christianity is not exclusive to only certain people. It is inclusive of every single individual who has been or ever will be born on earth. Jesus came to die for everyone, not just certain groups, not certain people of color, not certain communities or those with only specific traditions or political leanings. Everybody. Think about when you might have looked down from the top of a really tall building. All the cars would look like matchbox cars from there. And look at all the people. How tiny they appear. Would you be able to tell the difference between someone who's six foot two or five foot eight? No, not from that vantage point. Now you make your way back down to ground level. Suddenly it's easy to tell the different heights of people. So it is in our human judgments. On the human level, we see all sorts of variations in wealth, culture, education, character, goodness, and badness. But from God's point of view from high, everyone looks alike. Without being irreverent, I can almost hear God saying to some individuals, You dummy, do you really figure that you have calculated some shifty plan that'll let you go up against me and get away with it? You don't have a ghost of a chance. God doesn't like to judge. He definitely says that judgment is his strange work. Isaiah 28:21. Nevertheless, he will judge. He who spared not his own son but delivered him up will certainly not hesitate to judge those who reject his free offer of grace in Jesus Christ. Romans 8.32 6. God will evaluate according to how well we've lived up to the light that we've received. Romans 2 verses 12 through 15. For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law, 
For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while the conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. There are two types of people, those who have heard the gospel and those who have not. Both are judged according to how they respond to what they know. In other words, they will be judged on the amount of light which they have received. Those who have heard the gospel have seen the light, and by receiving Christ are living up to the level of the light they have received. But there are many people who hear the gospel and reject it outright. They have not lived up to the light, and therefore stand condemned for God. Of course, this begs the question regarding the natives in Africa who will never be exposed to or hear the gospel during their lifetimes. I heard you thinking that. Well, this is certainly unfair to send people to hell who have never had the chance, and most likely never will have the chance, to hear the gospel and respond positively to Christ, right? Well, Paul teaches us that these folks will be judged according to how well they live up to what they know, and they know much more than we realize. They have an internal conscience which guides them as to what is right and wrong behavior. They can look at the stars at night and see the universe and know there must be a God who created it all. In a startling way, Paul seems to be teaching us that salvation is available to those who have never heard the gospel if they live up to the light they have received. Romans 2 verses 7 and 8. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. This idea of living up to the light brings up some intriguing thoughts. Do you know anyone who's lived up to the light that they have received? Is it possible that God accepts for salvation those who've lived up to the light received and then perhaps it's best that we not share the gospel because those who hear it may reject it and be lost? They might have a better chance to live up to the light that you've received. I'm sharing these thoughts with you because people have asked questions like these many times. And I'm not declaring any sort of theological statement here. I'm just illustrating some of the things that people wrestle with. People who have greater light have more responsibility to live up to that light. Matthew 11, verses 23 and 24. The key is, are we living up to what we know? The answer for every single one of us is a resounding no. No person performs up to the level of what they know. Every single one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what we do, we all fall short. 7. God will evaluate according to the inner secrets of the heart. Romans 2.16 On that day, when according to my gospel God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. At the great white throne, God will open the closet doors and reveal the secrets of the people who stand there. Jesus spoke of this often. For example, Matthew 10, verses 26 and 27, So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Skeletons will come out of closets then. Deeds long buried in the depths of memory will be brought up. Unsolved crimes will find their solutions. These are the secrets of men. As a Christian, I know with absolute assurance that I will never stand before this judgment bar. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.1 Anyway, I've already settled my case out of court. The way to avoid the judgment seat of Christ is to settle your case before it comes to trial. Christ said, If you meet your adversary in the roadway, you had better settle with him, lest he drag you into court and you have to pay to the utmost penny. Matthew 5, verses 25 and 26. In this passage, the adversary will be God. He will be judge, 
jury, and prosecuting attorney. Christ died on the cross to offer us a chance to accept Him now and settle our sin issue before Judgment Day comes. If we die without Christ, our case will come to trial, and God has enough evidence to condemn every person to hell. And He will. There is mercy now, though, so settle out of court. The days of mercy are not without end. They are limited, and eventually, when we die, our choice is sealed for eternity. The question of why God would send a good person to hell is a tough subject, I know. But it shows us very clearly how devastating sin is and how much God loved us to let His Son die in our place to save us from that devastation. Again, this week's message is based on an article by Dr. Roger Barrier, and I've placed a link to it in the episode description. If you like what you heard, share this episode with others who you think might also like it. Maybe the person you share it with will want to join this weirdo congregation too. To join this weirdo family yourself, find us on Facebook, listen to previous messages, even find out how to join me in my daily Bible studies, visit WeirdDarkness.com slash church. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash church. You can find the sources I used for this week's message in the show notes. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me, weirdos, and until next time, Jesus loves you and so do I. God bless. <laughs>